So if I retire at 65, because I'm completely retired, I'm not getting insurance in any other way. So mm-hmm. I want to do part A and part B right away. Correct. And then if I am still working, I'm just going to do part A, mm-hmm. but because I'm going to get insurance through my employer, but say at 70, I retire mm-hmm. and I have six months from that point. Okay. Six months from getting part B mm-hmm. to be guaranteed issue to get a Medicare supplement. Okay. But if I just say, oops, I'm, I didn't get part B, then I'm going to be hit with this penalty. Correct. Okay. The content available on this podcast and on LoriWilliamsSeniorServices.com has been produced for educational purposes only. The contents of any episodes do not constitute medical, legal, or professional advice, do not reflect the opinions of this company, any of its parent companies or affiliates, and do not create any type of professional relationship between the audience, guest, and the host. No person listening to this podcast should act or refrain from acting on the basis of the content of a podcast without first seeking appropriate professional advice and or counseling, nor shall the information be used as a substitute for professional advice and or counseling. Lori Williams Senior Services, LLC, expressly denies any and all liability relating to any actions taken or not taken based on any or all contents of this podcast. Welcome to Aging in Style with me, Lori Williams. I'm an optimist by nature, and I believe you can follow your dreams at any age. My grandmother's journey with dementia ignited a passion in me to work with seniors. I've spent the past 13 years learning about seniors and aging. In my mid-50s, I followed my own dream and founded my company, where I use my expertise to help seniors locate housing and resources. On this podcast, we cover all aspects of aging. Join us each week to meet senior living experts and inspirational seniors who are following their dreams. The fact is, we're all aging, so why not do it in style? Hi, welcome to today's episode of Aging in Style with Lori Williams. Today, we are talking about Medicare. And if you've been following us for a while, you know that this time last year, we talked about Medicare. And I have just felt it was important to go ahead and uh, do another podcast about Medicare with June Kim, who was with us last time. But open enrollment period for Medicare is coming up. October 15th, and it runs through December 7th. And people need to know what their options are. They need to know about the enrollment period. And Medicare just kind of, it's confusing. And even after I've learned a lot about it, but still when I have to explain it back to someone, I'm confused. So that's why we have the expert on today. And um, we're having June Kim is going to speak with us, and she is a community relations specialist with Blue Cross Blue Shield of Texas. She's been in the Dallas area for about 20 years, and she's been building relationships in various capacities throughout her career. She enjoys educating the community about insurance options, and she is amazing at it. Her passion is to help individuals become educated to make the best informed choices when it comes to their health care. June has her BA in psychology from the University of Maryland, and her MBA from TWU, and she's very involved in her church, and in her time off, she enjoys traveling and reading. So welcome, June. I'm so glad you came back to talk to us this year. (laughs) Oh, it's my pleasure, Lori. You have been awesome, and this podcast has been really great for the community about educating about Medicare, because it is complicated. It is. It's very confusing. So I'm glad you're here to uh, straighten it out for us. (laughs) Okay, I would definitely try my best. (laughs) Oh, I know you'll do a great job. So let's just kind of start off with the basics. So what is Medicare? Okay, so Medicare is medical health insurance for those that are 65 or older, or those that have been on disability for two years or more, or those that have like certain diseases as end-stage renal disease or Lou Gehrig's disease. But it is strictly medical health insurance. This is not and will not pay for any senior living expenses. If you want to live in like assisted living or any one of those beautiful buildings that are popping up everywhere in the Metroplex, right? Mm -hmm. Any senior living apartments or any senior living situations. Medicare is strictly health insurance. Great. And Thank it, you for clarifying that because like I was saying earlier, I get that question all the time. <laughs> yes, yes. And they expect Medicare, oh, it's going to pay for this. It's going to pay for that. No, it will not. It will only pay for your medical, major medical health insurance. 
Okay, great. So let's kind of break it down because Medicare, you know, like we've been saying, it is confusing. There's all different parts, part A, part B, you know, D, I don't know. There's a whole bunch of different ones. So why don't you break it down for us? Okay. So I have this little cheat sheet and I think you uploaded it. Um, mm-hmm. um, it's called How Does Medicare Work? And it's this puzzle piece. It, it, Medicare is like a huge puzzle, right? With all these different pieces. So let me break it down for you. Part A is what they call hospital insurance. So with Part A, anytime you are in inpatient in hospital, it will cover those hospital costs. Okay. So that's part A. Part A is free for most people because if you have enough work credits, you know, um, I say free loosely because they actually took it out of your paycheck while you mm-hmm. were working. Right. So, um, you are entitled to that part A, um, if you have enough work credits without anything, no more extra premiums added to it. And that, like I said, covers anything that's inside the hospital. If you've been admitted into the hospital. Okay. Part B as in boy, um, is everything outside the hospital. It's your medical insurance. So that basically covers like your doctor's services, um, any sort of medical services and supplies like your lab, your x-ray, um, any sort of DME like your canes, walkers, wheelchairs, and then any sort of preventative care like your flu shots and pneumonia shots. Those are all covered under Part B. So obviously, it's really important that you have both parts, right? The part A and part B, because you're not going to be hospitalized all the time. No, that's hope not. That's hope not, right? And so you'll you'll need both parts A and B. B is not free. B, you will pay a monthly premium, and um, for this year, 2021, it's 148 dollars and fifty cents for the average person. Okay, so per month, 148. That's correct Okay. for part B. Okay. It obviously will change every year. It'll mm-hmm. most likely go up, but that is the average payment for a person for part B. Now, just know that that will depend on your situation and depend on your income. So obviously, the more money you make, the higher your part B premiums will be too. Okay. okay so that's based on your income. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. The other important part about part B is you may have a penalty if you did not sign up for Part B when you should have. Okay. When should so, you sign up for Part B? So, when you turn 65? Not necessarily. Okay. So you should obviously get Part A when you turn 65 because it will not cost you anything. Part B, you're going to hold off until you're fully retired because if you are still working, your employer is paying for your Part B because you will have employer insurance, right? Mm-hmm. Employer insurance has that Part A and Part B. So you don't want to be double paying. Sure. And especially okay. in Texas, if you get Part B, they have what they call six months of guaranteed issue from getting Part B. That means when we discuss further about the Medicare supplement plan, you cannot be denied. right? And that's going to be really important, especially if you have any sort of pre-existing conditions or what have you, because you want to continue on your insurance, right? You want to be mm-hmm. make, make sure that you are covered. So Part B you want to get when you're fully retired. You do not want to get it when you are working because your employer is paying for it and you do not want to get double paid for it, nor do you want to be disqualified from that guaranteed issue period, right? Gotcha. Okay, so part B, there's a lot into part B. Remember, there's going to be a penalty if you did not sign up for it when you should have. It's actually going to be 10% for every year you should have signed up and you didn't. And so, okay, so just to be clear, you should sign up. So if you're 65 and you're retired and you don't sign, you have six months to sign up for B. Is that correct? No. If within six months, we'll discuss it more when we okay. get to the Medicare supplement. Okay. But that, but that is the reason why not to sign up for Part B until you're fully retired. Okay. okay. But if you are fully retired, you want to sign up. You want to sign B. up. Is there a penalty if you don't sign up? That's what you're talking about. The penalty, right? That's correct. So when does the penalty kick in? Like how long do you have? What's the time period? So you will have basically within that time period for every year that you did not get that part B, you will be charged a penalty. Okay. Mm, Okay. Okay. And that penalty will go with you for as long as you have Medicare. That is really important. So if I 
retire at 65. Mm-hmm. I like because I'm completely retired. I'm not getting insurance in any other way. So mm-hmm. I want to do part A and part B right away. Correct. And then if I am still working, I'm just going to do part A, mm-hmm. but because I'm going to get insurance through my employer, but say at 70, I retire mm-hmm. and I have six months from that point. Is that what you, you said? Something about six months, but yes. Yeah. Okay. Six months from getting Part B mm-hmm. to be guaranteed issue to get a Medicare supplement. Okay. But if I just say, oops, I'm, I didn't get Part B, then I'm going to be hit with this penalty. Correct. Okay. Gotcha. Correct. Yes. Okay. Part C of the puzzle piece is what we call a Medicare Advantage plan. And this is very confusing to people mm-hmm. because yes. <laughs> Medicare Advantage plans are run by private insurance companies. Okay. So are Medicare supplements. So they get them confused, intertwined. But Medicare Advantage plans is a whole new ball of wax. It's actually what we call an all-in-one plan. Okay. And so it will have your part A. It will have your part B. Most often it even has a drug plan included, your part D. Okay. So that's why they call it an all-in-one plan. And it is run by private insurance companies. So, okay. Um, and we'll discuss that. Okay. Because Advantage plans can be a little less expensive. That's why people tend to go with them. Is that correct? It depends. It depends on how often you go to the hospital, how often uh, you go okay. see your doctor, because those costs could add up too. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. So with an Advantage plan, you are subject to uh, what they call co-pays. So anytime mm-hmm. you go to a doctor, anytime you go to the hospital, anytime you get a lab, you may be subject to co-pays. And if you do that quite often, that could very well add up, mm-hmm. right? Definitely. Really fast. The other puzzle piece we'll talk about is the part D, which is D for drugs. And that's easy to remember. You will have to get a drug plan when you get on Medicare. If you do not, you will also have a penalty. Okay. So you will have a penalty with your part B, B for boy, and part D, D for drugs. If you do not get a plan when you should have and you didn't. Okay. okay. And it runs like part B does. If you are fully retired, get it right away. If you. Yes. For part D is mm-hmm. as long as you have credible coverage, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just like with part B, as long as you have credible coverage, if it's through your employer or through VA or whatever, it is considered credible coverage, then you will not have a penalty. Okay. But you cannot be on Medicare part A and B and not have a drug plan. Okay, or else Mm -hmm. you will have a penalty. The penalty for Part D is for every month that you should have had a drug plan and you didn't, there will be a penalty for that. Yikes. That could add up. (laughs) Yes, that could add up very, very fast too. And you will have that penalty. Penalties for Medicare will last for as long as you have Medicare. For the rest of your life. (laughs) Yeah, basically. Okay. So those are two parts to remember that to have penalties. We will talk about Medicare supplement insurance now. This, like I said, is also run by private insurance companies and they get it mixed up between the Medicare Advantage plan and the Medicare supplement plan. Medicare supplement plan um, is often, I think in the olden days, called a Medigap plan. Mm -hmm. But it is what it is. It supplements your Medicare. Okay. So when we go into original Medicare, which is part A and part B, we call it original or traditional. Some people may refer it to. Medicare only covers 80% of the costs. Okay. With that part A and part B, if you're on traditional Medicare. So the other 20%, you will have to pay out of pocket, or hopefully you have a Medicare supplement insurance to help supplement that other 20% that uh, Medicare will not cover, okay? So supplement insurance is covered by private insurance companies like Blue Cross Blue Shield, and it will help cover your supplemental costs, okay, that Mm -hmm. Medicare covers. So the thing with supplements is the older you get, the more expensive it will be. And also you need to be what they call somewhat healthy, to get a Medicare supplement insurance. And this is why I say in Texas, they give you six months from getting part B to have what you call guaranteed issue. And guaranteed issue means basically no questions asked. You can get that plan. So that's why I said it's important to hold off on part B unless you're fully retired 
because then it would preclude you from that guaranteed issue, the six months, right? Oh, I gotcha. Okay, for so, the supplemental. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So let's say at 65, you're still working and you're going to work until you're 70. Okay. So at 65, go ahead and get that part A, right? It's not going to hurt you. Part B, hold off on until you're 70, until you're fully retired. Then you can go ahead and when you get part B, then you have within six months, well, obviously you want to get it sooner because then you won't have that mm-hmm. part of the medical insurance. As soon as you get part B, you can get a Medicare supplement within six months. No questions asked. That's what they call a guaranteed issue. Right? Okay. And that supplemental plan, it will not go up as you age or will the price go up as you yeah. age? Oh, yes, okay. It so it still will. Okay. It but will. you won't have any questions asked so you can get it. That, okay. Basically, yeah. Mm-hmm. Once you get on the supplement, we cannot basically boot you off oh, um, nice. <laughs> unless unless you do not pay, right? Okay. You don't pay your premiums and obviously, you know, your plan will not uh, be in existence. So, and I don't know if you can answer this, but on the supplement, what are the average premiums for that? Or I guess there's probably a lot of variables with that. Yeah. So the variables with the supplement is um, whether if you're male or female mm-hmm. um, and if you're a smoker or non-smoker. Okay. okay. And then obviously it goes up, you know, depending on what, what age you are, um, and what plan you choose. Okay. It's a, there's a lot of variables in mm-hmm. that. If people want to get a quote, I'll be more than happy to give okay. them a quote for that. Great. Okay. And so they can contact me. All right. So we talked about all the different parts of Medicare. Now we're going to talk about how does that all work together, right? What we call in this, I'm going to describe it as a flow chart. So there's two paths to take on Medicare. And this is for individual, not if you are in a large group, because if you work for a large company and you get retired, they may have different plans for you, right? Mm -hmm. So this is for just for individual people that are trying to choose a Medicare on their own. And it's it's not tied to any sort of union or large company. Okay. Okay. So what we have is original Medicare. That is your part A and part B. On this route, you will have to get a separate drug plan because remember, if you don't have a drug plan, you have a penalty. And on this route, you can get a Medicare supplement insurance. Mm -hmm. So on this route, original Medicare, you have your Part A and Part B. That's your 80%. You have your Part D, your drug plan. And then you can choose to get your Medicare supplement insurance. Okay. So on this route, you have three cards, basically your red, white, and blue Medicare card. You're going to have a Part D, a drug plan card. And you're going to have a supplement card. That's a lot of cards. That is a lot of cards. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But the upside to this, taking this Medicare, original Medicare route, is that you can use your Medicare anywhere in America, all 50 states, any doctor, any hospital that takes original Medicare, you can get service. And you're not going to have a lot of -of out-of-pocket because you have the supplemental. So basically, correct. Maybe on some drugs, I guess. I know I hear people talk about that a lot. Some medications are expensive. Yeah, because that's a different plan. On this route, Mm -hmm. you get a separate drug plan. Mm -hmm. But that is correct. On this side, you can go any, like I said, any doctor, any hospital in the 50 United States that takes original Medicare Mm -hmm. and you are covered. So it's a pretty good plan. I call it PPO on steroids, Mm -hmm. uh, PPO plan on steroids, because your your service, your network is huge. Yeah. All right. So the other route is what we call the Medicare Advantage plan, okay? And this plan, remember I said it has part A and part B. Most often it has a drug plan included too, right? So it's an all-in-one plan. On this plan, you cannot get a supplement, okay? It's it's because supplement supplements the original Medicare. Supplement is not intended for a Medicare Advantage plan. That would be too much insurance. Mm -hmm. And actually it's illegal Mm -hmm. for for agents to sell you both plans. Okay. Okay, That is just way too much. Mm -hmm. So yeah, don't fall into that trap. (laughs) Okay. Good to know. (laughs) Okay. Um, So on this side, that's Medicare Advantage plan is the all-in-one plan. This is very localized and you will not be using your red, white, and blue card, although you will have it because you have your part A and part B. You will be using the card that you chose the company to have your Medicare Advantage plan with. So it may be a Blue Cross Blue Shirt card, hopefully. (laughs) <laughs> or it could be any one of the um, our competitors insurance plan card. That's what you're going to use um, to get your services at a doctor's and a doctor's office or a hospital. 
Okay. It's kind of like an HMO. Basically. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And we'll discuss more about that too in detail okay. too. The difference between an HMO and a PPO, right? Mm-hmm. So on the Medicare Advantage plan, a lot of companies, they have HMOs and they have PPOs on this plan. But the biggest difference between this and the original Medicare is that the care that you get instead of all 50 states, it's very localized. So you can only go to the doctors and the hospitals that take your Medicare Advantage plan. So let me repeat that. You can only go to the doctors and the hospitals that take your Medicare Advantage plan. It's very, very different than original Medicare. Okay. So normally this is very localized and it is within counties. So if you're in a big metroplex, so obviously, you know, Dallas, Fort Worth, DFW, you choose a Medicare Advantage plan and that's the service area. It's within the uh, Dallas, Fort Worth area. And there's only certain hospitals and maybe certain doctors that will take that plan. Okay. If you move to Austin, you will have to get a different Medicare Advantage plan because what works in Dallas, Fort Worth will not work in Austin. Okay. Mm-hmm. So also, if you move out of state, if you move out of that country or that metroplex county, you may have to change your Medicare Advantage plan. June, what would happen if you are on a Medicare Advantage plan and you live in Dallas, but you go visit your daughter in Austin and something happened, you had to go to a hospital? What would happen? I get that question a lot. Mm-hmm. In a true emergency, and you, it has to be an emergency, okay? Like severed heart arm, attack or whatever, something. Yeah. Severed heart attack. Exactly. You go obviously to the closest hospital there is. Okay. Mm-hmm. And they're supposed to cover it in a true emergency. Now, if they find out that, well, that really wasn't an emergency, you may be subject to out of network costs. Mm-hmm. So, okay. so just be careful. Mm-hmm. Th- that's, that is a caveat to the advantage plan. Okay. Now there are some companies that, that if you call ahead of time, like for us with Blue Cross Blue Shield, if you call ahead of time and you're on an advantage plan and saying, Hey, you know, I'm going to be in Florida visiting my grandkids for two months. We'll be like, Oh, okay. Let's find out who around that area can give you care if you do happen to get sick. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like a prior authorization or prior permission yeah. to find somebody that's in your network. But yes, in a true emergency, you go to the closest hospital and you just you're going to have to make sure that it is a true emergency. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Good and, to know. And so you won't have that with a me- original Medicare, remember, because mm-hmm. you, you go, go basically anywhere. Right. So that brings up the point on um, network of HMO and PPO. We hear those acronyms a lot. So the difference between the HMO and PPO is in the HMO network is very, very limited. And in an HMO, you have to go through a primary care doctor for everything. So basically, if you want to go see a specialist, you have to go to your primary care doctor first and then say, hey, you know what? I have this mole growing. Um, I think I need to see a dermatologist. And your PCP will go, hmm, you know what? You're right. Let me get you a referral. So there's an extra added step and you have to follow the rules in an HMO. Okay. And you, that specialist needs to be in that HMO network. Mm-hmm. Now, if you don't follow the rules and you go out of network and you're like, well, I don't like that dermatologist that I got a referral from. I'm just going to go to the one that I like. You may be responsible for 100% of the cost because you have gone out of network in an HMO. Mm-hmm. Okay. You have to follow the rules really, really closely in an HMO. Now, on a PPO, it's a larger network. Let's just say that in a PPO, you don't have to go to your primary care doctor for a referral. You can go to any primary care doctor or general doctor that's within that PPO network, okay? And specialists. So you can go to, you don't have to go to your primary care doctor first and say, hey, I want to go see this dermatologist. You just go see the dermatologist that's in your network. Now, in the PPO, if you go out of network, you pay out of network costs, Okay. Obviously, it's going to save you money if you stay in network Mm -hmm. to stay in that PPO network. But with a PPO, it has an option. They have in network costs and out of network costs. So if you go out of network, you'll still be covered, but you're going to have to pay out of network costs. So it's very, very different with an HMO because an HMO out of network, you're responsible for 100% of the costs. Okay. So to kind of recap that original Medicare, you go wherever you want. Mm -hmm. An advantage plan is through an insurance company and could be an HMO or a PPO. That's correct. Okay. Gotcha. 
Mm-hmm. I'm going to really get this this time around. <laughs> yeah, you're getting better. I think the more that people hear it, you have that light bulb aha moment. Like, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah, you have to hear it over and over, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So um, I we really appreciate you, Lori, in the community to just kind of just, you know, iron things out for us and just kind of help us explain better yeah. because it is very complicated. And seniors, this is why I got into the business because, mm-hmm. you know, when my mom, aged into Medicare, she was so confused. And I was like, well, you know what? I have a college degree. I even have an MBA. Let me look at this. It was so confusing. And Mm -hmm. I was like, if I am confused, how are older seniors able to, you know, work through this or even understand what's going on? Yeah, absolutely. And and I don't even know all the ins and outs outs of it you know and i've been with blue cross blue shield for eight years now but it's all these little different um nuances and and different scenarios because everybody has a different scenario right Mm -hmm. so it's not a medicare one size fit all kind of Mm -hmm. although there's two basic paths to follow but it really depends on what your situation is yeah and i know like i was telling you earlier i mean it's probably weekly i get a call where people just have a question about Medicare or they think Medicare covers something it doesn't, like senior living, which, as Jean said, it does not cover, or they're moving from out of state and wondering how that's going to work if they're on an advantage plan, or just like you said, moving city to city, you know, you need to re, you know, change that advantage plan or may need to. Um, so, yeah, so I'm really glad to have you in the community. And I know I send people your way all the time because I just have very basic knowledge, <laughs> although it's growing each time we yeah. do a podcast. Yeah. So you're going um, to be a professional. I yes, <laughs> I will be an expert one day. We'll see. So what changes are you seeing for going into 2022? Because I know the open enrollment period, like I said, is coming up October 15th, which is why we're doing this podcast now, and then going through December 7th. Well, actually, what does that mean, the open enrollment? What does that mean to people? Oh, yeah, that's a really good question. During open enrollment, which happens every year, October 15th to December 7th, like you said, people that are on Medicare have that one-time opportunity within that time period, October 15th to December 7th, to make any changes to Medicare. So if you are on a Medicare plan and you're happy with it, like the old saying goes, if the wheel ain't broke, don't fix it. You have every right to stay on the plan that you're already on. You have no obligation to change whatsoever. If you're happy with your plan, you stay with it. It will continue on for the upcoming year. Now, if you're not happy with your plan and you want to make changes, you have that opportunity to do so during Medicare open enrollment, okay? And when you make changes during Medicare open enrollment, your new plan will become effective January 1st of the upcoming year. So make changes during this open enrollment coming up. It'll be, your new plan will be effective January 1st of 2022. Okay. Okay. And I believe last time we talked about this. So say someone is on original Medicare, they Mm -hmm. switch to an Advantage plan and then get cancer. Mm. And then they are like, okay, I want to switch back to original. Mm. That's They can't do it, right? That is the million dollar question. Okay. That is really (laughs) important. Yeah. So people think that they can change back and forth, switch back and forth. And the answer is yes, you can as long as you are healthy. So you can switch back from original Medicare to Advantage plan. Advantage plan has no um, restrictions in terms of pre-existing conditions or health, okay? But if you're on an Advantage plan, and like you said, two, three years later down the line, you get cancer and you're like, wow, none of my um, specialists or, or doctors or hospitals are in my network. I wanna change back to original Medicare it will be too late for you. You cannot do that because remember, Medicare supplement insurance, you got to be healthy. Mm -hmm. You have to be healthy unless you are within that six month of getting part B. Okay. Okay. So that's why- I'm getting this now, Jean. (laughs) All right. So this is really, really important. This is what I tell people. A lot of people think, oh, 65, I'm going to get part A, I'm going to get part B. And then they find out two years later, they get cancer and they didn't get a supplement. 
and then they want to get us up. I'm like, sorry, mm, too late. No, okay. too late. Okay. Mm-hmm. So there is time on the essence of this and nobody has a crystal ball because you do not know when you're going to get, uh, you know, acute, acute disease, right? Mm-hmm. Or else, you know, you would be getting a supplement right before. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and another thing to remember was with this a supplement, you know, the older you get, the more expensive it is. Mm-hmm. So I have these people that are in their 80s and they're wanting to change. And I'm like, you know, I, I would welcome your business, but I cannot in my good right conscious to tell you to change that because the older you get, the more risk you have mm-hmm. of upcoming, you know, injuries or diseases, right? So I would recommend if you are on a supplement to keep that supplement for as long as you can. Mm-hmm. Now, but, but like I said, that's just me. I can't tell you to choose one way or another, but if you have an advantage plan and you know, so let's go back to my story of my mom. She's on original Medicare and she has a supplement. Okay. And then, um, further into it, a couple of years later, she got cancer. She's in remission now, but she would call me up every year because every year her supplement gets more expensive. Right. Mm-hmm. And she's like, it's open enrollment time. June, can I change her? And I was like, mom, no, <laughs> you want to keep it because I'm like, because it's getting so expensive. I'm like, but okay. When you go to a doctor, how much do you have to pay? She has the F plan, which covers basically everything. There's different plans on the supplement, but she has a comprehensive plan. So anytime she goes to a doctor, anytime she goes to the hospital, she doesn't pay anything more because it's covered with her premium that she pays every month that she's complaining that it's expensive. Right? <laughs> now, on the other hand, and so it works for her. Okay. On the other hand, my in-laws are on a Medicare Advantage plan and they love their doctor and they love their hospital that they can go to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, you know, they have minor surgeries and overall their health is really good. So they like the network and they like uh, the plan that they're on. So they're happy with that. Right. Mm-hmm. So it really depends. They had a supplement, but they said it was too expensive for them. Okay. So, so, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into choosing, you know, what plan is right for you, but only that person knows. And it really depends on, like I said, their resources. And, and another big thing is the network. Cause a lot of seniors are what I say, quote unquote, married to their doctor. They don't want to change. Right. That's a really important question. I ask them because I'm like, if you don't want to change, then there's not many choices you have. Then you need to find a plan that your doctor will take. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that fits, that fits what you are wanting. Yeah. You yeah. can't choose willy nilly, you know, like mm-hmm. throwing dart. No. And I think I know a lot of seniors and I get confused too. You see these beautiful commercials (laughs) where they make advantage plans. Look, I mean, just that's what you need to be on. And I've had families call me where they had, you know, dad was in rehab and saw a commercial and called and switched his plan while Mm -hmm. in rehab. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, that's concerning. But like you said, advantage plans can be less expensive in some cases, but they could end up being more if you have a lot of co-pays, right? So it really, there's a lot of factors that come into play. You can't just say across the board, an advantage plan is going to be cheaper because that's kind of what I thought, but what you're saying, that's not necessarily true. So like I said, with the supplement, right? Because you're paying it up front with those Mm -hmm. monthly premiums, you're not subject to any co-pays, right? Or you may be subject to, you know, some little incidentals that is not covered, right? That you would have to pay a pocket. With an advantage plan, everything is copay. So anytime you go to a doctor, anytime you go to a specialist, anytime you go get maybe lab work done or to go to the hospital, they're subject to copays. Mm-hmm. Now, if you don't visit those providers very often, like my in-laws, but you know, that it is cheaper then. It is cheaper. But if you go a lot and you have an acute disease or you a lot of ailments, you have to go to a doctor like every two weeks or something, it does add up. Mm-hmm. So you gotta have to you have to take the whole situation into the picture when yeah. you're when you're thinking, oh well, advantage plan is cheaper. Or well, it may not be. Mm-hmm. You know? And that's why so, people need uh, to talk to you, June, before they make a decision. 
<laughs> well, I can I can definitely give them the tools, but mm-hmm. they have to decide on their own what's right for them. And mm-hmm. I always tell them, you know, just because your neighbor or your friend or somebody has a certain plan does not necessarily mean that it's going to work for you. I mean, it may work for them. Mm-hmm. Right. Perfectly. And that's why they chose it. And maybe they're, you know, advocating it for you, but you really have to make that decision on mm-hmm. your own. Okay. And just a question because it has come up before. So if someone like, you know, we had this gentleman who was in a rehab and it was during open enrollment, he called and changed his insurance. Can he change it back if you don't like the kids discovered, oh my gosh, he shouldn't have changed it. Can they change it back if it hasn't? start at the first of the new year if it's still within the open enrollment period? Yeah. So that's a really good question too. So normally you can change as many times Mm -hmm. as you want during open enrollment. The last change that you made on or before December 7th is what will take place on January 1st. Okay. Okay. So that's good to know. <laughs> yeah, if something tough. happens, you find out this is not the right plan. Uh, you know, your kids say mm-hmm. no, <laughs> you can always switch it back. Right. And um, to add to that, this was just recently in a couple of years. Now, CMS, which is Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, they make all the rules. They actually extended open enrollment for Medicare Advantage plan. So January 1st through March 31st, if you have an Advantage plan, And you find out that, wow, this is not the Advantage plan for me. You can change to another Advantage plan from January 1st through March 31st. So it's only for people that have an Advantage plan. So say they, in open enrollment in October, they said, Mm -hmm. okay, first of the year, I'm going on Advantage. They Mm -hmm. get on the Advantage plan January, and then they have till March. And they're like, this is not the right plan. They can switch to another Advantage plan. Yeah, they have a one time. Okay, but they can't switch back to original. They have to stay in an Advantage plan. Um, Actually, they can. um, But remember, you can't get the supplement. (laughs) Oh, that's right. So that's not good. Yeah. Okay. Before it used to be, I used to kind of call it like a lemon law. Like, wow, I didn't like that Advantage plan. Let me Mm -hmm. try something else. So before it used to be till Valentine's Day, but now they've extended it. So you have that one time from January 1st to March 31st. If you chose an Advantage plan Mm -hmm. during open enrollment and you find out, wow, this is not what I wanted, um, you can choose another Advantage plan or Mm -hmm. you can go back to original Medicare. But obviously, if you're not healthy, you might not be able to get that uh, supplement plan, right? Exactly. So Um, basically, I mean, just choose wisely and mm -hmm. pretty much stay the path with your decision, right? (laughs) I mean... Because you yes. can't, you don't want to lose the supplement plan by going off original and onto exactly. an advantage. Exactly. Okay. If you're if you're on that route, yeah. Now, like I said, every year advantage plans you can change, and mm-hmm. you can go on a new one starting the new year. And then if you're on an advantage plan, then you're like, wow, I I didn't mean to choose that one. I want to choose another one. Mm-hmm. You can do so from January first to March thirty first. One time change, and it will become effective April first. Okay. okay? Yeah, there's a lot of rules and regulations regarding that too. So mm-hmm. just like you said, choose wisely. <laughs> yeah. Choose wisely and stay the course. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, don't be trying to switch around. <laughs> right. Uh, um, Get yourself I do, in trouble. <laughs> right. I do want to say though, for those that are aging in, because we have a lot of people that are aging in, I want to say we're still in the baby, uh, baby, baby boomers, boomers yeah. era, right? Like mm-hmm. over 10,000 turning 65 every day. So for those that are aging into what we call Medicare, you actually have a seven month period during your aging in mm-hmm. of turning 65, which happens only once in a lifetime, right? <laughs> so they're going to give you a once in a lifetime, those seven months to actually enroll in Medicare. Okay. But the earlier, the better. Early bird gets mm-hmm. the worm because if you start three months prior to, okay, it, your Medicare benefits will start the first day of your birthday month. Okay. Okay. So, so like I'm the, I'm the last year of the baby boomers. I'm 1964. So I want to do my birthday's April. So like April what? when? April 6th. Okay. In the beginning. So, okay. So three months prior three to months April. Prior. 
Okay. I want to go ahead and figure out what I want to do and get enrolled. That's right. And April 1st, right? Mm-hmm. Then it would start. I'm on Medicare. Absolutely. Orig- I think original is what I'm choosing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, my birthday is in July. It's the end of the month, July 26th. Okay. So if I start my Medicare and apply through Social Security, because Social Security is actually the administrator for Medicare. A lot of people do not know that. Oh, okay. okay. Back up. Social Security is the administrator for Medicare because we've been paying into Social Security for Medicare as mm-hmm. we work, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, got it. Right. So three months prior to my 65th birthday, I am hopefully going to be fully retired. <laughs> so I'm going to get <laughs> Part A. I'm going to sign up for Part A and I'm going to sign up for Part B. Okay? okay. And because I did it three months prior to, my benefits for Medicare, I would get my red, white, and blue card saying that the benefits are effective July 1st, even though my birthday okay. is July 26th. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. Gotcha. All right. So early bird gets the worm. Now, if you start on your birthday month or start any time after your birthday month, it will be the month after. Okay. Or two months after. Okay. Yeah. So early bird gets be the without worm. coverage there. Okay. Exactly. All right. Exactly. Okay. That makes sense. So, and yes. then do they send you just out of curiosity now, because I mean, I still have several years <laughs> until mm-hmm. I'm 65. Well, not that many, I guess, but you know, it's getting closer, but do they send you something in the mail? Like, you know, way prior, or do you need to just know that that three months before you turn 65, you can go ahead and do this. That I'm not sure. Cause I haven't been in that position. <laughs> But I do hear that a lot of my seniors say, oh, I'm being getting bombarded with Medicare information. Uh, okay. So I'm pretty sure that they know when, you when know, it's coming up, about com- <laughs> coming up. But yeah, it is your responsibility to make sure you sign up for mm-hmm. Part A and for Part B or delay Part B if you're still mm-hmm. working. Okay. All right. And then you can do all this on your own. Do the A and the B. And then when you add the supplemental and the drug, that's when you need to choose going through an insurance company like Blue Cross Blue Shield. Okay. That's correct. Yes. So your A and B, obviously you're going to sign up to Social Security, which is um, ssa.gov, ssa.gov. Okay. Those are one of the resources. And then medicare.gov. That's Medicare. Okay. They're wonderful websites to reference to. So when you're ready, yes, you want to go to ssa.gov and sign up for part A or for part B, mm-hmm. you know, depending if you're going to be fully retired or not. Okay. And then they're the ones that um, say, okay, we're going to send Medicare your information and dispense your Medicare card. Okay. And Medicare will get, have that. And then you go to Blue Cross Blue Shield or whatever other insurance provider. And that's when you work out. Right. So other, so Blue Cross Blue Shield can help you with all parts of Medicare, just like any other health insurance. We can help with your Part D, your drug plan, mm-hmm. your Medicare supplement plan, and a Medicare Advantage plan. So we have all the parts okay. of Medicare. Gotcha. Okay. And then how can they contact you for more information? So they can contact me by my phone number, 214 214- Seven eight three seven nine zero one, or they can email me at June underscore Kim. So J U N E underscore K I M at B C B S T X dot com. Okay, and we will put this on the website, or we have all the information after the podcast, so we'll have all that connected so that they can find you. You are the best at explaining this, June. I really feel like I've got it now. <laughs> Okay, because great. It is so confusing. So is there anything else you want to add or is that? Um, yeah. So mm-hmm. if you can, along with my personal resource and contact information, just don't forget medicare.gov and the 1-800-MEDICARE number. They are open 24-7. Yes. Okay. Medicare 24/7. is open 24-7. Wow. Okay. And then social security is ssa.gov. The 1-800 number for uh, Social Security is 1-800-772-1213. They are open Monday through Friday, 7 to 7. Okay. And what was the 1-800 number for Medicare.gov? It's 1-800-633-4227. Okay, great. We'll put all that. Yeah. Okay, great. And then one last resource is 
my website or our Think Blue, I'm part of the Think Blue team. We are internal agents for Blue Cross Blue Shield. Our website is Think Blue, T H I N K B L U E T X dot com. So Think Blue T X dot com. Okay. And they Great. can find me there um, and they can request a one on one appointment and they can find a lot of resources at our thinkbluetx.com website. Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much, June. Um, like I said, you're just such a great resource for everything Medicare. You're my go-to person. <laughs> and I, I just think you do a great job of explaining it. And that's why you are the um, specialist. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. And I always tell people, you know, I really don't care what kind of Medicare they have. I should. It's more important to me that they understand what mm-hmm. they have. Yeah. Okay. Because I... You know, people call me up and they're like, oh, you know, I want I want this and I want that. And I'm like, OK, but let me show you your true options. Mm-hmm. All right. And let me make sure that you understand, mm-hmm. you know, and, and are you OK with that? So it's really important that you have somebody that can um, help you ask those right questions because Medicare is so confusing. You don't even know what questions to ask. Right. Exactly. So find someone who can, you know, educate you, know your options and then choose wisely. And don't be switching back and forth. That's probably, that's mostly what I got out of this, I think. <laughs> exactly. Especially Important. if you are, you know, under uh, rehab or under doctor's mm-hmm. care or, you yeah, know, you that's are not the a, time to switch. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. You're under some sort of treatment. Absolutely. Do not switch. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not. So, well, thank you so much, June. I appreciate you being on the uh, podcast and I hope this is informative to everyone. We will have all the information and you can always go to my website, which is Lori Williams dash senior services.com. And also please share this podcast with your friends and family. I just think it's so important to get this information out. Um, because like June said, it is, it's confusing. It's confusing to everyone. It's confusing, especially if you're a senior. So please be sure to share this information. And as always, thank you for listening and we'll see you next week. <music>